Liberty family, Stephen Wood here. Uh, if you and I have never met before, you're watching this video, you're like, who is this guy? Uh, my name is Stephen Wood. I am a pastoral resident on staff at Liberty River Wards. And if you're tuning into this, great. Uh, we're going to be, this is the first of what is going to be a series of videos uh, during this crisis uh, with the virus while we're all inside our homes. The church is doing work to post a few videos a week of different leaders going through the ESV lectionary. Uh, so the ESV lectionary is just like a guide for scripture readings every day of the year, and I'm sure we'll have the link for that posted in the comments to this video. Uh, I hope you're all doing well uh, in this staying at home deal. If you have kids, I hope that you're, you've been able to figure out a schedule and be sane. Um, I am wearing sweats right now, and don't judge me because you probably are too. And... Uh, yeah, we celebrated my son Michael's birthday yesterday. Some of the gifts are behind me. Uh, pandemic was not, the game pandemic was not one of his gifts. That's just, as all this was happening, Alyssa and I just had a craving to play that game. I bet we're not the only ones. Um, but we had to celebrate my son's birthday yesterday in self-isolation, self-quarantine, or whatever you want to call it, social distancing. So we had to just FaceTime people in while he was eating his chocolate cake for his birthday party. So that was... It was, it was sweet and blessed in what it was, but it wasn't what we wish it was. Uh, I'll say, that's an update from this house right now, and I hope you all are doing well. But let's get to what we're here to do, which is uh, a reading from the lectionary, me sharing a reflection, and then me praying for us. So, the passage I'm going to read is from Psalm 119, verses 97 to 120, and I'm not going to give you time to flip there, because you can just pause and flip there. So, Psalm 119, verses 97 to 120. This is the psalmist speaking. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn aside from your rules, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to keep your righteous rules. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my free will offering of praise, O Lord, and teach me your rules. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your testimony are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever, to the end. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your promise that I may live, and let me not be put to shame in my hope. Hold me up that I may be safe and have regard for your statutes continually. You spurn all who go astray from your statutes, for their cunning is in vain. All the wicked of the earth you discard like dross, therefore I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. This is God's word. Uh, if you're just jumping in to reading the Bible at all, uh, Psalm 119 is like right in the middle of the Bible. It's the longest chapter in the Bible, and it's basically a long poem that's a, a love letter of the psalmist uh, to God, uh, just adoring his word. In verse 103 that we just read, it talks about how God's word to the psalmist is sweeter than, than honey. It tastes sweet to him. He loves it. Uh, that's what Psalm 119 is about. I want to just talk about a couple things that pop out to me in this psalm. And uh, I'm going to spend more time on the second one and introduce you all to a resource that is really comforting to me personally every day um, as, I, as I go through unexpected times of hardship, suffering, times I wouldn't have chosen for myself. Uh, so the first thing I'll point out uh, is that uh, verse 107, the psalmist is severely afflicted. Uh, the writers of scripture are not naive. They didn't know what people, it's like they were people who didn't know what we all go through. They had loved ones who died. Uh, they had enemies pursuing them. Uh, the psalms are filled with, with, with songs like that of the writer personally being chased by his, his enemies. 
uh, and also they they are their own enemy was their own flesh um, in in some of the psalms the their their own sins their own shortcomings uh, they're the temptations to draw them away from this beloved sweet as honey word of God so I'll say the psalmist is not naive uh, he's not someone who like got to put on the like get out of suffering free card first uh, 107. The psalm says, I'm severely afflicted. Uh, then the other thing I want to point you to is written verses 111 to 112. Uh, and this, this theme runs throughout. Uh, I'm thinking about hope, but it says, Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. Uh, the psalmist's adoration for God's word, there's, there's short-term benefits to it it being sweet like honey that's like it's just i just love it i adore i, I delight in it but the psalmist again and again turns to the long-term hope uh, that is given in god's word his promises his testimonies about how his words for the psalmist endure uh, beyond anything else and maybe you're hearing this and you're like what are all these what are testimonies what are commandments what are words like what are promises god's promises for for me, uh, I want to share with you all a resource. Uh, it's, it's, it's from a catechism that was written back in the 1500s, so it's very old. And it was um, folks who were uh, a bunch of theologians who were together, and they were trying to sit, say, this is what the Bible says, in like a summary. And it's in 52 questions, or 52 days is many more questions than that. Uh, but this is the first, this is the, how how this this catechism, this these ancient words, this is how it's ancient introduction to christianity this is how it opens this is from something called the heidelberg catechism so the it opens as a q a format and the first question is this what is your only comfort in life and in death this is if you what are god's promises what are god's testimonies this is one way of asking that question i think this is a great way to ask this question and it's a question that I'm asking these days right now as I'm stuck in my house as a disease is growing outside our window um, and the, the headlines get worse and worse what is my only comfort in life and in death I just want to draw you guys attention to this this first part here um, which I have memorized and I would commend memorization to you as well that I am not my own but belong with body and soul both in life and in death, to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, God's promise for us is this, in times of things not being sure, in times of economic instability, um, social crises, uh, our hope is this, uh, both in, in life and in death. We are not our own. I, as Stephen Wood, I am not my own. But I belong both body and soul um, to my Lord and Savior Jesus, to my faithful Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, it's, scriptures all, it's so all the key, like when you boil down what Christianity is about, Ultimately, what it's about is God rescuing his people through his son, Jesus Christ, so that his people will be united to Christ, that his benefits will be theirs, um, and, and if they follow in his footsteps, they're united with him. They're hidden with Christ in God. Um, we are hidden with Christ in God, is what the book of Colossians says. And a key thing with being united to Christ um, is that we're going to uh, go through some of what he went through, and in going through what he went through, we're united with him. And Christ bore a body, he had a body like ours. He hungered like us. He, and he ultimately, in the greatest act of love and self-giving, gave himself up for us and suffered even to the point of death, even death on a cross. And a way that we know this unity with Jesus, you know, that, that we belong to him, uh, we experience unity with him when we're going through, often we experience the most unity with him when we're going through hard things, 
things that this world is throwing at us that we would not have chosen for ourselves um, when we're unjustly suffering. Uh, our, our things are just hard. Um, Jesus Christ had no place to lay his head. And I want to invite you to, during this season, um, to turn to that comfort again and again in life and in death. Uh, that ultimately what we can, when we think about our worst fears in this thing, we can turn back again and again that even in the most worst case of scenarios uh, in death, we are united with Jesus. Um, and that doesn't change. And even in the worst of scenarios, we're, you know, we're, we're united with him even more. Uh, so I, I pray that you're comforted by that. And, uh, and when everything around you seems shifty, I pray you turn to that again and again, that comfort in life and death. So I, I have gone over my time. So I am going to have a quick, I'm going to say a quick prayer for you all and for me and for our church. Let's pray. God, we thank you that our that our one comfort in life and death, um, that we are not our own, but that we are united uh, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is faithful, and that his benefits have become our own, and that death, uh, that grieves the enemies, uh, has already been, that the defeat of death has begun um, in Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, that he has overcome death, and one day he will return to destroy death. Completely, that it will be the last enemy that's defeated. As First Corinthians, First Corinthians, fifteen says. And I pray that we would find much comfort during this time in our unity with Jesus, as we are forced into situations that are unpleasant. Um, we remember that He took on all forms of unpleasantness, um, so that we could be healed. And I pray for us that You give us endurance during this season. We pray for relief. We pray that this, that the coronavirus would be wiped away, that those who are sick, that they would be healed. And on all these things, we just pray for your mercy. Your word, your law, your testimonies are good. So many of us, we've, we've been pursuing other words and testimonies that aren't good. We pray that you turn us during this uncomfortable season where we're stuck in our houses, that you turn us again to you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good night, family. Hope you all have a good, good week. Mm.